Hi everyone, this is Johnny O'Nose, and I am playing Soul Trader, a version that was released on June 10th, 2016. This is going to be the first episode of a series of Let's Play videos. Some folks on the Steam forum had asked me to put together a Let's Play so they can see what it's like to start the game out and to progress through. So, I already picked my uh, g general options, I didn't want to have to look through this list too long on video. Um, the settings that I started out with was no ship, uh, no escape pods, and basically no to all those options in the beginning of the game. So I landed on someone that I think that I'd like to start the game out as, I think it was this person, yeah, Legendary Wisdom, Legendary Charm. The character description attributes, uh, they don't seem to affect the game too much, but um, I want to have Legendary Charm. I don't know why. I was really hoping for someone with a huge majestic beard. There was a guy up here, I think. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Yeah, check that out. And there was a guy with a white beard that I really like. But anyways, this is the person I'm going with. Uh, this is the person I'm going with, and that's about it. So choose, and I was going to boy. I almost took out their mother. So I'm kind of hoping for... Um, kind of landing either the New Order or the Old Federation. So I'm going to say struggle with running games. That would give me a piece of information that I think reduces my courage, so I don't really care about that, and hardest worked hardest at mathematics. This is one of the few only yellow piece of information that you get that can, uh, that can increase your influence. So, there we go, mathematics, and it starts to generate along here. Alright, cool. Looks like I have the ability of picking where I want to start. So, luckily, oh my goodness, look at my guy. He's got like a bionic eyeball. Alright, go with Johnny O is my name, because it's the only way to figure out what's going on. That gigantic list of information you get near the end of the game. Alrighty, and um, let's pick somewhere. It looks like I'm taking the track of being a. Um, obviously, a manager of some sort, but I wanted to pick the right one here. I want to be a management training. There we go, let's see. So. Let's pick a place. Ooh, I can go to Sulky as well. That's pretty cool. That is in the outer faction, though, so I don't really want to pick those. I'm going to pick a place that doesn't have a hotel, so I'm going to try to pick London. And uh, let's see, is there. Let's go with the bank. It's market. All right, let's do market. Management trainee at London Market. Ooh, gosh, already starting as a political assistant in the old Federation. That's pretty amazing. That way I'm already friends with all the folks that work in the Senate. So I don't have any other options here, so um, let's do it. So I live in London, as I'd hoped, and I'm picking a job that I'm probably going to want to get at some point. Oh, I get another option. Man, this is a really good seat. Alright, I guess I'm a middle manager already. Alright, so let's, um, I haven't done this goal yet, so I want to keep trucking at this. Um, there's a lot of different goals in here. Some of them are a hell of a lot easier than others. Uh, this $2,000, $200,000 one is probably, in my opinion, the one of the easier ones. This one's also very easy. This one, um, hopefully it can be achieved. I haven't seen any gold or rocks out there. This one, I don't know how you get this one. Um, so hopefully we can look into bettering our, uh, fame, our fame throughout the game. Our chief, no thanks. All right, so let's go with uh, becoming the president. Johnio Leggy. Leggy? Alright. So here we are, starting the game out. So we're going to do a couple things to. The uh, first thing I'm doing is I'm 
just starting a chat with someone random. That way it stops the time from progressing. So it allows me to kind of get a lay of the land of what exactly um, I've got based off of how things were generated with the seed. So I'm just going to take a quick look at my uh, people list. Looks like both of my parents had uh, has already died, which is terrible, because look at that. They are both wealthy, influence, and influential, and great fun, and reliable. Those are some really great stats to have for someone as a friend. All right, so I've got a uh, work colleague and influential, work colleague and influential. So... President Trouble is probably someone I'm going to have to stay away from, given that she's influential and annoying. I'm not exactly sure what annoying is. I think that has to do with uh, relations. No, I don't have that yet. Okay, so let's keep going through this list here. Um, apparently friends with uh, a child. So this person is quite strong. So she's my friend. So I'm going to just um, give me a moment. I'm just going to write this character's name down on a notepad. Uh, the the uh, video may freeze. One of the suggestions that I'm going to uh, to put is to allow this game to run in uh, windowed mode, because that way uh, I wouldn't have to minimize every time I have to write up something to the side. All right, so the reason why I took this person's name down is because she's got three strong stats that I want to be able to share with other people. So I mean, anytime I see a long list of like you are friends with blah, you are friends with blah. Um, I want to be able to pick her to influence mostly these two attributes here. So I'll show you a quick example of that. Oh, it looks like running games proceed to influence. Interesting. So uh, let's just see who this person is real quick and uh, get an idea if she's, if she's worth our time. She's, she's a political assistant, which is good. Uh, she's well off financially as someone known in Amarani. She's originally from the Old Federation. I have no idea what Amarani is. I think that may be a city out in the old, the outer alliance, but I'm not sure. So, um, I don't have a perception of her right now, I don't think. But I did work... I did work with her at one point. Dodgy mechanic, that's good. Alright. It looks like the only... So, Morton Hagar... Regina Trouble. Okay. Morton... And Regina. So, I apologize for all this preliminary planning that's going on here. It's very it's very important to understand who uh, your contacts are before talking about them. You don't want to pick someone like this person or the president who's influential and annoying. I don't want people to think that I'm annoying. Okay, so let's just jump into the game right here. So it's 10 a.m. on Monday, so that means everything's open. First thing I like to do is I'd like to get myself alone. So I want to see if there's anybody that knows me here so that they can give me a better rate on the uh, on the loan. It's my great aunt, so um, Hi. let's see what she could give me. Okay, sure. That's the generic rate. So yes, let's give me okay, the money. Sure. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the city. Let's go to the let's go to the huge military office. And uh, my sister works at the front desk. Hello there. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and hire myself a ship so I can get started here. 
Uh, looks like uh, some of these are starting with some guns. So, so what I'm looking at here is I click on this and I can see the color, colors of the gear that are right here. Uh, you want to be looking for things that are of a lighter color closer to uh, the blue side of the spectrum. So obviously red is not great, uh, yellow is in the middle, and blue, green blue is uh, amazing. So this ship here is 13 grand, so it's telling me that it's got a decent weapon. So the stats that I'm looking at for weapons are, uh, I like to have higher fire rate as well as bolt size. This allows you to do mining uh, much, much quicker. So that particular weapon is not that great. The other thing, the only other reason why I'm spending a lot of time looking at this is because the fact that, um, I think it's the same one, uh, is that you can't make any alterations to these ships that you hire. So you really are, you know, kind of stuck with what you hire out right from the beginning. So it's another green. Terrible. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting to get like an awesome ship right off the bat. So let's just go with what has the lowest. Like, it still has a gun, which is nice. Uh, so I'm going to go with this guy here. So I'm only really spending $190 on this ship, which is nice. So which should leave me about, you know, a little under, yeah, I can do minus 200. Sure. Alright, so I now have a ship, which allows me to fly around. So the first thing I like to do is I really want to build up my capital. Right now, I'm in a crappy ship. And I am, you know, I don't have any money to spend. So I want to try to stay away from doing missions and social stuff. The social stuff I can't really do very well because I don't have much to offer in terms of information. I don't know a lot of people. I haven't done anything amazing. So I want to get myself into um, a decent state where uh, I can get stuff done. The good thing is, uh, because this ship was so cheap, I don't think I'm going to have to do... Oh, click. Got it. I don't think I'm going to have to do too many trade runs to start out to be able to buy my own ship. So this is a pretty good start. Buying your own ship allows you to um, make alterations to it, get better gear for it, and you don't have to pay uh, a daily amount. Um, to see how much you owe people, you click on your portrait here, and then you hit deals. So I owe the bank oh, two seventy-five a day. I thought it said three thirty-three, but all right, well, I'm okay with that. And I have to pay another thirty bucks. So I'm looking at having to to pay back um, investors a little over three hundred dollars a day. So I'm flying the Venus here because they like to sell good for cheap. So um, doesn't look like there is a market on uh, Biken. i go to Richards instead and see if there's a market there. Here we go. We have a huge market. So you got to mentally remember that the market is now on Richards instead of Biken. And see if there's anyone I know here and there isn't. So whoever I talk to doesn't matter. So, trade goods. Sure. Alright, so I'm going to get myself a uh, piece of gold. So, most of the uh, larger planets will buy gold for 5 grand. Uh, the smaller or mining planets will sell them off for 3300 3, to 3500 So, you can already see that I'm going to make a pretty good profit of, uh, you know, a thousand and a half off of one sale. Um, let's see, the silver ore is, is the price is about average, so I would probably sell this for around 2200 at, at Earth, so this really doesn't feel worth it. Titanium, I think, can go up to 2000 so this is a $700 uh, profit, if um, what I think is correct. So, just uh, flying back to Earth now, so I'm looking at about maybe three grand worth of profits for this trade run. So for me, uh, 
trading is kind of what you want to do in the beginning of the game to get yourself some money. Once you get yourself a ship and you you implement some uh, better weapons onto your ship, then you can get into mining where where mining is a hell of a lot more lucrative than just uh, going back and forth and trading. So let's go ahead and fly to Primus. So the the way that navigation works in this game is you can see. Whoa, oh, I missed it. Really needs a hotkey for that. That way you can just kind of s slam on it while you're flying toward it. And the ship is terrible, so barely move. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how different a starter ship is to a uh, end game ship. These ships will more like fly around like UFOs. You got all the maneuverability that you want. You got crazy firepower. So if um, you're kind of seeing this game as it is right from when you start and you're going, man, these ships are deathly slow, you'll be amazed at what you can do later in the game. So navigation is uh, your generic, uh, you got a, a jump gate to other locations that has a planet on it. So everything that's in green here is considered a gate. Everything that's in blue is the planet. So let's see, I think there's a market in New York. Now the game is uh, procedurally generated, so a lot of these buildings may be different during your play. Your friend's Hello. son. Sure. All right, let's go ahead and sell that titanium. So yeah, it looks like I've only I only made about 500 from titanium, sure. and a pretty good chunk of 2,000 okay. from the gold ore, which is very nice. So I made yeah I made a good 2,000 to start. Now we're going to go back. So while you're flying in a very slow ship, you can continue to look at all your information that you want to be able to put together here. Now that I can buy two golds in one pass, this will, this will uh, speed up tremendously making about 4,000 for back and forth. Got it. That's how I tend to like to do it is just try to coast as much as you can until you get to the gate and then just slam on that button until you get there. So I'm going to look at my story so it looks like um, oh. I was made but redundant from the old Federation Senate by President Travel. So it looks like I've got a little beef with the uh, President, which is probably why I consider her influential and annoying. It's a nice green piece of information. Right, because it's now 7 p.m., the, um, hey. The market is probably closed, but let's see if there is a uh, there is a tiny bar which has 23 people. So what I'd like to do um, with you know when it's either nighttime or uh, the weekend when things are closed, it's a good time to to go and start approaching people to see what information you can get from them. So in the beginning of the game, I like to focus entirely on um, on your own faction as well as the new order because the closest faction to the old federation is the new order so the new order sits in between the um, outer alliance and the old federation not to mention that the capital of the new order uh, which is called io they uh, they love gold they love it like you can sell you can buy it for 3k at one of the frontier faction bases, and then sell it to IO for like seven grand. So the amount of profits you can get from that uh, that trade route is very strong. All right, so um, let's see. Uh, so the way characters move around in this game is they tend to stay on their planet unless they or to they tend to stay in their city which is Richards here 
um, unless they have a particular job that takes them out into space, um, such like a freelance trader or something. So the point that I'm trying to make here is I want to see what other buildings are in this city to see who I need to start um, talking to for information. So what I was hoping for was that there would be an embassy here so I can start working on my, uh, my friendship with the new order ambassador. But because there's no embassy here, it's probably on Bicken instead. I know there's at least one on in Venus. Uh, I'm going to have to instead just start looking for people that I want to become friends with. So this person is a manager. I tend to just look at the um, the you know, their job first. But let me, before I do that, let me make sure that I have, oh, there we go. Okay, then. I just want to make sure I've got a, a room booked for tonight so I can actually sleep. I know, I know Chris Parsons is working hard on making it so that uh, sleeping is easier so you don't have to just sit here throughout the night. Alright, here is my cousin. Now there's a strange thing with, with family members, like, I don't know if they are considered your friend before and then you you can't talk about how you become friends with them. So it's, family members I'm not sure right now are all that useful. They are useful if they are, you know, if they have a really cool ship and you're really good friends with them, that way you don't have to actually hire a ship, you just borrow their own. So this person is a mechanic, so mechanics are good to know because they tend to have Hi there. No can do. better trade components. Like this person isn't going to trade with me because she doesn't know me very well. So I'm going to just start bragging with her. And this list of things you can tell people is split between uh, directive information. So this particular one right here, I boost perceived wealth of Johnny O. That, that's all, the only thing that's going to be raised by it. So I'm going to click on this, this one and then click on you. Well, she doesn't have a opinion on me yet. So let's go through some others. The, so first one is directive, which is like you've done something and you're going to get some sort of uh, attribute raise because of what you did. Uh, and then the other side of the coin are, you know, you're sharing information about the friends that you've made. So when you share, you know, share a friendship with somebody, you're, you're basically getting a comparison of your stats versus the person that you're saying that you're friends with along with the person that you're talking to. So the reason why I wrote down those names earlier, so um, Merlinda, so perceived wealth of Merlinda, so I knew she was, I think, wealthy and uh, influential. So I can click on her. And now that I've got a point of relationship with this person, I can now click on the U tab, which then, you know, then start showing me what her perception of me is. So to just to test out of whether or not telling her that Amarlinda Amarlinda was a good person to share, um, you can click on the U, you scroll down, and you can see exactly what's boosted in terms of her perception of you is. So it looks like this per sharing the friendship of this person here gave me uh, Perceive wealth plus. So that's a good person to start telling people that I'm friends with. Uh, unfortunately, she's still not giving me much information on her, so I don't know if she's just a crazy person or what. So let's see. So I skip, picked up some skills in business. I up my reliability. And uh, let's do some influence. So these here, uh, so the different categories of the information as well. So I said there was directive as well as um, the, the sharing or the comparing of yours versus other people. Uh, those, what I'm talking about is, is affecting your, attribute, your perceived attributes to other people. Now, uh, the color coding for each one of these pieces of information dictates how much of an impact you're making to the relationship with this person. So if I tell her something that's, you know, kind of a big moment in my life, like I struggled with running games, oh my goodness, um, 
this will increase, the relationship will increase much more than, uh, than say, something that's in a white color. So it's, uh, I think it's white, green, yellow, orange, red are the, uh, how impactful the information is. So I really don't want to hurt my influence with this person because I don't want her to go telling people that I'm not influential. So I'm going to look at my, my list of people. This is a very early game, so this is pretty easy. So, Courtney. Who is Courtney? I don't recall ever seeing Kurt Courtney New, so <laughs> yeah. Really wish you can just right click these and just remove them from your list. It looks there looks like there's going to be some enhancements to this whole thing with some sorting and maybe some filtering. I guess in the next build. So Rosemary Leggy. My friend. I don't know anything about her. I don't know her well enough to go, yeah, I'm friends with her. She's awesome. Um, this is kind of a gamble. I don't want to click on this one. So um, Bell McLongman. Once again, I don't want to share that. Okay, so this is this is kind of what I was talking about earlier about not really having a lot to give somebody in terms of information, but I do have a new friend so that I can then see what I perceive of that person. So this is male bar. I know that she's influential. So right off the bat, she's going down the right track. So I want to continue being friends with her because if I'm going to be doing some trade runs back and forth between Earth and Venus, I want to make sure that I hit this bar every so often. All right, it is 12 a.m. now. But let's just see if anyone just kind of uh, apprentice, mechanic, training manager, training manager. Okay, freelance traders are good. She's from the Outer Alliance, though, so I don't care. And if you don't know what I'm looking at, I'm looking at both the job as well as their faction. Okay, she's a bar worker, a manager, he's old federation, he's doing all right financially. All right, let's uh, chat this guy up real quick. I'll be a lot quicker at this now that I'm not explaining everything. Don't have much to say, anyways. So Melinda was the good person to share the friendship with, and yeah, looking pretty decent. Didn't say anything about how, uh, how Melinda affected that, but it's fine. Got a new friend. Let's see what he looks like in terms of uh, my initial perception, so I don't know too much about him yet. So I'm going to pin him for later. Like I said, there's not a lot I can do with my current uh, bragging rights, so might as well just sleep for the night. Okay, we're getting to the 28 minute mark of this video. I'm going to go ahead and do some more trading uh, and uh, get a good amount of money going and uh, get back to you guys in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed it. So this is uh, Johnny Ono's playing Soul Trader. Thanks so much for watching.